Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your best source for topping the leaderboard with my pro gamer strats, and it is time for episode 30-something of my Paradise Killer Let's Play, where we are going to begin by walking into the party and being like, damn, this is dead. So yeah, where we left off last time, we finally got into the council chambers and discovered that, yeah, no, uh, my theory that there was not in fact a murder at all it was completely unfounded. As the investigator, we were told early on that no one had been into this room, but that everyone was sure a murder had been committed. Which brings me to the question, uh, how did they know a murder had been committed if they hadn't been into the room where the murders were committed? And also, damn, how were they so correct? Because this is this is quite a lot of murder, generally speaking. It's, it's there's murder on the floor, there's murder on the walls. Bits of murder on the ceiling, murder getting into my teeth as I walk through the, you know, vapour of the room. So, I'm going to start looking at the corpses in a minute, but first I want to know what this is. Pink petals. Does this put Yuri at the scene? He wears a hat with pink petals. This won't hold up in the trials without anything to back it up. Yeah, I should think so. I mean, there's pink flowers all over the island. Rhododendrons and... All kinds of stuff. I still don't know what's up with this, though. There's a, a blood trail that ends in a wall, which is interesting. Mind you, there's weird magic, so who's to say that nobody can go through walls? Right, what's this? There's a strange blood spray here. It doesn't match any of the council members. The spray is from a bullet exiting the body. The bullet is lodged in the wall. It's a Fukada round. There's a gun lying next to Leader Montserrat. It's been fired twice. It's an old weapon that uses Fukada rounds. The blood sample isn't in the database, but there is a hit on some DNA. What the hell? This blood has Carmelina's DNA. It's not her blood, but it could be her offspring. Does she have a child? If I go to her without any more evidence, I'll rattle her and get nothing. If she does have a secret child, they'll be somewhere on the island. Alright, so who the fuck is Carmelina's secret child? Is it Yuri? That would explain why he's such an asshole. As we all know, um, being an asshole is a <laughs> is a genetic trait that's passed on. No, let's not go down that road. That's terrible. Uh, right, let's have a look at over here with the mysterious space helmets. The helmets the council used to traverse the second seal. Oh, is that it? Okay. Well, there's two missing. How many did we have in our inventory? We've got one, which is the one we've used, which I think is the one that smelled like smelled like our good friend Lydia. Although, I'm pretty sure there was a second one we found somewhere at some point. And there's definitely two helmets missing. So if we don't have that in our inventory, maybe I found that somewhere in the world. Maybe maybe whoever is tied into this murder has the other space helmet. That's worth, worth keeping in mind. I also think it's interesting, um, clearly they use these chests for something. As archaeologists would say, ritual purposes? Um, which indicates to me that this was how they snuck this demon in, right? Because this is the demon restraint mechanism that we're familiar with from the secret evil lab. So they were expecting something else and there was a demon and the demon bursts out and slaughters all of them. Uh, but why did Montserrat shoot Carmelina? This demon has a bullet hole in his head, right? He fired twice, so presumably one shot killed the demon and one shot hit Carmelina. Or maybe the bullet went through the demon and hit Carmelina. Or maybe he shot Carmelina twice and the, the, the demon thing is a, is a coincidence, you know? I mean, who could blame him? But, I mean, I'm putting together a pretty strong scenario here, which is that someone uh, smuggled this demon in here like a fucking Claymore landmine. So that when these guys opened it up, it just slaughters the lot of them. Right, so uh, it, I guess it's time to start the corpse party. Time to start rummaging in people's bodies. Time to start looking for mysterious clues hidden within the folds of people's uh, internal organs now on display, tragically. I think all of them wear these masks, so I don't know which ones are which, except for Montserrat, who wears no mask. Just a kind of a snazzy, abstract crown piece. And some pretty cool glasses that I would actually quite like to add to my, uh, my own robot-faced ensemble. 
Councillor Leon Disaster. Oh, that's a good name. Cause of death appears to be a blade taking off the front of his scalp and slicing through his brain. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. Everyone has been sliced up with a blade. The lacerations are all clean. They were done with a sharp, perfect blade. They don't have any skin cells under their fingers. They were killed before they knew what was happening. The cuts match the blade Henry was allegedly found with and took from Aikiko. Alright, well that points to Aikiko doing the actual murders then, doesn't it? Maybe the demon's just here as a part of a cover-up? Or maybe my theory about a bunch of different people having different plans all going off at the same time is true. And there was a, a demon in a box. Coincidentally, at the same time, Carmelina did the thing. Counselor Fine Stranger. The cause of death is nearly de being decapitated by a laceration across his throat. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. <sighs> Pause to have a little drink. Counselor Macon Origin. Cause of death is a slash across the throat. All of them across the throat, huh? May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. I mean, Aikiko's not like... She's not got like super speed. She's not magically fast, right? So how could she possibly have cut all of these throats in time? Counselor Pandora 2. Cause of death is a horizontal slash across the stomach which emptied her of her organs. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. Lunatic Pope. Missing several fingers, which suggests he tried to defend himself from attack with a blade. Cause of death is a deep horizontal cut through his head. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. Okay, alright, so that makes a bit more sense. So that would imply to me that whoever attacked them was probably someone that they were aware of being present, but which they did not expect to attack them. So whoever it is starts, starts kills a couple of uh, I had to pause a moment there to turn off a phone alarm I forgot about. Anyway, uh, yes, so. What the hell was I saying? Right, yeah, so they probably didn't suspect that they were going to be attacked by whoever attacked them, then that person got several several cuts in and slaughtered a few of them uh, without, like, any resistance. But by the time that person reached the other side of the room, we start getting people trying to defend themselves. Kafka Memory. Cause of death is vertical laceration from groin to ribcage. Most of his organs have spilled out. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. I mean, that's that's borne out by the fact that these are very calculated clinical cuts. Across the throat, across the throat, across the throat. And then once we get to this side, it's much more rip and tear. Uh, rip and tear. Until it is done. Which could imply, uh, you know, taking them by surprise, killing a few of them, and then taking more effort to kill the ones who are trying to escape. Or possibly it could indicate, like, a lack of, like, emotional investment in those deaths and uh, a more brutal desire to see these guys slaughtered. Also, Kafka memory. Wasn't there something about Kafka memory? A founding member of the Syndicate. Huh. I thought he was might have been the one who committed suicide. Oh no, that was Ais Kiwami. I'm sure I remember something about Kafka memory. Did he get secretly married to someone? Is that what I'm remembering? I wish I, I wish there was a, a search bar on here so I could just search Kafka memory and all of the relevant uh, relevant stuff would pop up. Yeah, I've got no idea what that might be related to. Something in my brain is itching about it, though. High Priestess and Counselor Gabriella Devotion. The cause of death is a deep laceration through the abdomen. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. So she's the High Priestess, so she was there for the slaughter ritual and then presumably she came here for the council session afterwards um when all of this happened right i think that just leaves leader montserrat and this fellow who i now realize is levitating slightly above the surface of the the floor which is interesting hope he's dead i didn't expect to find a dead killer demon inside the council's penthouse it's been shot in the head the bullet is stuck in the skull it's a Fukada round, a high-powered bullet. There's a gun lying next to Leader Montserrat. There are hellish claws on its arms, like knives. They're perfect as well. The claws are covered in blood. Starlight can run the blood. Several council members. The council were all killed with a perfect blade. This thing's claws could have done it. Interesting. Okay, so that is another explanation for the, the killings. What the hell is this thing doing here? Does this have anything to do with Henry? He let demons onto the island. 
Shinji's on the island, so the marshals definitely didn't catch them all. If the marshals missed Shinji, did they miss this killer demon too? This crate is bizarre. It looks like it was hidden in this chest. Did someone bring it in here and hide it as a trap? It looks like the containment crate burst open, smashing open the chest. Why is it that as soon as you start getting sunnier weather, as the cycle of the year turns ever onwards, that that's when you start getting people driving motorcycles outside my window? Unseasonably warm January weather, of course. The perfect time to hop on my motorbike and start doing wheelies in someone else's front garden. Anyway, if you could get a killer demon in here and find a way to release it at the right time, it would make a hands-free murder weapon. There are a number of restraints inside. The inside is covered with claw marks. The restraints have sacred wards on them. Those are used to subjugate demons. Is this where the killer demon came from? The claw marks match. If the killer demon came from this crate, it didn't kill the marshals downstairs. If the killer demon got here via this containment crate, it means it didn't go through the holy seals. Someone brought it through the seals and left it here. Someone planted a trap. When the council were vulnerable, someone released a psycho killer demon to attack them. Were they assuming no one would get into the crime scene afterwards though? The crate leaves a trail of evidence. Did it matter? Is the presence of the killer demon enough to complete the plan? Or did they assume that the seals would never be opened again? They assumed I wouldn't be on the island investigating. That's a bad call. Starlight's detecting dead zone residue from the crate. I mean, yeah, we... <laughs> I feel like they really should have predicted that someone might find the secret lab in the dead zone before they come here. This crate must have come from the demonology bunker in the dead zone. There were more in there. I guess they did. They, I guess they did put that in there then. This crate has a remote receiver on the lock. Someone could have remotely activated it to open it. This receiver has the same number as the one Witness dialed at midnight last night. Witness opened a crate containing a killer demon remotely in the council penthouse. Holy shit! Looks like I've got a lot of. Uh, I like that I'm now investigating the murder of the killer demon. <laughs> All-encompassing justice, truly. Interesting. Okay. So once again, this 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 really does lend evidence to a widespread conspiracy, right? This is what I was talking about previously. I had the pre I had the theory that Henry's like, uh, Henry's demonic possession was, was part of a plot, right? That they did that to him on purpose in order to turn him into a weapon with which to kill the council. It turns out I was right. That lab was for that purpose, but that their method was much simpler, right? So the timeline for events with regards to Carmelina and Witness is they go into seclusion years ago, build their secret lab in what was then not the dead zone, do a bunch of demonology research on, on this guy, trap him in a box, ship him in here, and then wait for someone to stand on him like a landmine, right? But that, like, that accounts for all of these guys dying of, of, of wounds, right? Because if Montserrat shot the demon in the head, presumably, presumably it did attack all these guys and slaughter them. Or maybe he was just fast. <laughs> no, it had their blood on his claws. So it's not that he was just like a crack shot who whipped out his, uh, who whipped out his pistol and just domed it immediately. Um... Interesting. Actually, let's have a good look at that pistol. There we go. Pretty simple design. I like the I like the big chunky suppressor on the front. The not a suppressor, muzzle brake. That's what they're called, right? <laughs> I promise I know from handguns sometimes. Uh, I should prepare for an influx of comments going um actually. That's okay. I don't mind people going um actually. Right, what was I doing? Fuck, I got completely distracted. I need to deal with Montserrat. But yes, so that uh, that demon does not account for the uh, the slaughtered fake martial guards out front, but they were never really martial guards. They were citizens. So maybe they're, you know, nobody killed them, right? Maybe they were just slaughtered as part of the slaughter ritual and then put in position. Um to imply that the, that the seals were breached, right? 
I think that makes sense. And again, the only person in a position to do that, and definitely someone who was involved with the murder of Grace Bloodlines, at least tangentially, was Aikiko, right? Uh, Grace was only murdered because Aikiko intentionally broke protocol, and Aikiko has been incredibly yeah. obstructive this entire time. So if she's involved, it, she might be peripherally involved by simply allowing people to do stuff that she could have stopped, right? But it certainly looks like the masterminds of this were um, Witness and Carmelina, which would make sense. And it also... But then but then we have the question of how uh, Sam and Lydia are involved. Which they probably are because of the repelling gear. Leader Montserrat. Cause of death is a sliced windpipe and artery. There's a gun lying next to him. There's a strange pendant around his neck. May the silent goat walk with you in all of the cosmic heavens. Can I take his pendant? Like, it feels odd that you would mention that he has a strange pendant and then not... Like, not show me it or do anything else? Is that it? Hmm. What could a strange pendant mean? Anyway. I also, I didn't really notice this before, but I like that they're all dressed like, um, fucking Piero the Clown. Okay, I think that's everything I can see in here to investigate. Or at least everything the game will let me investigate. So we've definitely got a lot of questions to go uh, to go ask all of the people that I, I can't see. Oh, I can see them with my magic vision. So I've definitely got additional things for all of these guys to deal with. Hmm. I still need to solve those two ghost problems. And of course, I also don't really have much further evidence on the mystery of what happened to K-Hacks. Was this just a peripheral murder? Did this just happen by coincidence? Or is this involved in the main mystery? Because... If they killed him, why? Was there something K-Hacks could reveal or not reveal? Perhaps that's relevant to the investigation? Would he be able to tell something about... about whether or not certain things had happened in this... in this... In this uh, situation? Like, what's up with that? And how does Henry tie into it, right? Maybe maybe Henry's only element of involvement was that he was a good excuse for, for the people who wanted to kill Grace Bloodlines to kill Grace Bloodlines, right? Because they needed the island's exorcist to be gone if they wanted a um, demon-based, like solution to their problems. Did I miss anything here? I don't think I did. We know these guys aren't marshals, and we also know that they weren't killed by whatever killed everybody else. So these guys were killed- so- uh, Did- Did our, uh, our good buddies, the Daybreaks, kill these guys, right? Because we know that we know that Sam's knife is all like No, Sam's knife is super super nice, but we know that Lydia's knife knife is all fucked up. So did Lydia kill the gate guards? And if so, why? And how does that factor in to everything else that's going on? Ooh, this is this is wrinkling my brain. This is a tasty mystery. I'm going to I'm going to ponder for a bit while I, I I wander around looking for any collectibles I missed here, which I apparently have not. <laughs> There's nothing here. There's a bunch of them over there, though. <clears throat> but yeah, I think the people we'll talk to next will probably be Grace, Bloodlines, uh, or One Last Kiss, as she now goes goes by. Um, and uh, Henry. I want to talk to them first, the both of them. Because they're the most closely linked to demon stuff. Can I get up in here? No. Uh. There's definitely something inside that. What is this? This is the Justice Building. I haven't actually been back inside the Justice Building in a while. I have to be careful because I don't I don't want to start the investigation. Uh sorry, the uh The end of things. I still love the sort of like knock kneed shy anime girl posture that the Avatar of Justice wired into the very substrate of the island itself has adopted. missing. Well, there's the gun, obviously, but I can't take that until the end. I guess the rest of it's just around. 
Oh, look, I missed one over there. That's probably just a crystal. I bet these are all crystals. Oh, okay. I guess this one was straight up a save point that I missed previously. Whoopsie doopsie. It's been a long time since we've heard that phrase, huh? I mean, fast travel unlocked, not oopsie doopsie. Although it may have been a long time since you've heard someone say oopsie doopsie. As it is a bit of an odd one. Forbidden City. <laughs> Forbidden City, Starlight Skin. A city that was sealed off, knowing the reason was outlawed. The resistance was crushed. Interesting. Anyway, that's uh, going to be about it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Come back next time and we're going to go uh, bother every single one of these people in rapid succession to explain the many mysteries that I have now gathered. I think I'll talk to Carmelina last because I definitely need more evidence or she'll clam up. I'm not sure about everybody else though. I mean, they're so reluctant to tell me goddamn anything anyway. But I feel like I must have nearly everything I need to crack this case open now because there's really nowhere else left to go. I've explored every reachable area of the island as far as I can tell. I might have to have a little think while looking at the map to figure out what else I might be missing. Anyway, uh, as we squat gently on a jet of water, you know, it's good for your innards. Let's, um, let's just quietly, quietly have ourselves rinsed out. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Right, it's the end of the episode. Uh, that's all from me. Thanks for watching and goodbye. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.